graduate of the Naval Academy in Annapolis, uh, loved the Naval Service. I think I learned a lot there. It's never over till it's over. I mean, you're in the fight, you stay in the fight. Loyalty to the missions of the command, loyalty to the men and women you serve with, I think that's critical. And it is so important and prevalent in everything that we are today is the culture of our company is rather unique because of the men and women that we have the opportunity to serve with. And lastly, efficiency. You don't waste time on stuff that's just silly. You focus on the problem at hand and you get at it. I was born in India and we immigrated to the States when I was less than a year old. And I think the immigrant story is really an entrepreneurial story. The systems and the way things work are foreign to you. And so you spend a ton of time figuring things out. If we look at what we've done both at Terrawolf and Beowulf uh, before that, you know, we're entrepreneurs at heart. We're really identifying and understanding, you know, where an opportunity lies. And even though it may not seem obvious to others, really figuring out a path to, to go after it. When I left the Naval Service, I went to Solomon Brothers on Wall Street. And it wasn't long before I realized I wanted to be in my own business, build my own business. And so I was fortunate to win the opportunity to buy Continental Energy Services. It was an unregulated power subsidiary, so back in those days when the utilities were monopolies, if they wanted to own power assets outside of their territory, it would all go into these unregulated power subsidiaries. I ended up buying one of those and then bought several more assets and, and loaded up on the power side of the business. And we ended up with our own operating and maintenance and construction arms as well. So we could not only acquire these things and finance these things, but we could build them, greenfield development, own and operate. I graduated uh, from college in 1998. Uh, I ended up at a place called Evercore, which at the time was only 17 professionals. You know, today Evercore is a public company. I think they have you know, a couple thousand employees. But when I joined it, it was a fairly entrepreneurial place as well. And it was at that time at Evercore that I had the, the fortune to, good fortune to meet Paul. Paul was a, a friend of one of the founding partners of the firm. And so we started looking at investments together. And so that's how I got to know Paul. And so Paul one day said to me, hey, when you really want to start doing business, you know, come work with me. Nazar was young when he was at Evercore, and he was really focused on robust working of the model, the financial model. And did, did that make sense? Did it make a business an interesting investment opportunity? I was much more intuitive. Uh, I like that business. Here's an opportunity. I smell it. Uh, how do we go into it? Can we operate it? Can we make it you know, an exciting investment from an operational perspective or from a deal perspective? And so the combination of Nazar's robust analysis of the financial underpinning of the business, uh, which he got through that very disciplined approach at Evercore, coupled with our combined entrepreneurial notions of, hey, that could be interesting. That's what led us onto the same path. It was in meeting Nazar and discussing his analysis of a business opportunity that I found him unbelievably intelligent, uh, prescient in his problem solving, and had a fluidity with the math of a deal to work within the more intangible, emotional intelligence of an opportunity to find a way forward. And so I just thought it was great and said, you know, when you're ready to leave this, you want to do, you know, really want to get hands in all the way up to the elbows and shoulders, come and join, please do. And he did.